Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening. Welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I'm your host, Andrea Giudice, and I have with me my guide dog, who I choose not to introduce for his focus and our safety as a team. I'm really excited about tonight's show. I know I say it every month, but it's really true. Last month, we talked about safety as pedestrians, and that's critical, obviously, but we're taking it one step up tonight. We're talking, I have here with me tonight guests who are all involved in not just being pedestrians, but being athletes and running on the streets which is really very cool and something I don't do. <laughs> um, so I'm going to introduce, I'm going to go from my left around the circle. So next to me is Suzanne, next to Suzanne is Aviva, and next to Aviva is Erin. And each of these wonderful women who come in this evening play a different role in the organization called Achilles International Connecticut. And I'm particularly pleased to have them here this evening because this is an organization that while I am very awed by what they do, I'm not particularly learned in what they do. So I will be learning as much as everyone else out there in TV world tonight, which is very cool. Erin, I think I'm going to start with you. If you want to just give really whatever you want to talk about, except possibly soups, since that's not what we're going to talk about. Um, <laughs> about sort of how you got involved and what sort of an overview of what Achilles International Connecticut is. Great. Well, thanks for having us on, first of all. Um, so Achilles International is, um, we're headquartered in Manhattan. We have 65 chapters around the world, including here in Connecticut. So we are the Connecticut chapter. And our mission is to support um, individuals with all types of disabilities, medical conditions, um, in mainstream athletics. So we're about being active, we're about being safe, and we're about inclusion. And we focus on running, and we have a subgroup of um, athletes who do triathlon as well, both here in Connecticut and around New England. Wow. OK, cool. So that's <laughs> intimidating. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and races well, of all distances, well, anything so from hard. fitness walks all the way up to marathons, ultra marathons. Wow. OK. That is amazing and awesome. How long have you been with um, Achilles here in Connecticut, and how long has this been an organization that's been in existence? So, good question. So, it was actually founded in, again, in New York in the late 70s, wow. and then here in Connecticut out of Gaylord Hospital in the late 80s, so about a year late or a decade later. Wow, that's really cool. Right. So, we've been kind of in and out of activity in the state of Connecticut. I got involved myself um, about eight years ago. I had a head injury, and prior to that, I was a big runner, triathlete, and I was doing all my rehab at Gaylord, where again, Achilles started. And someone handed me a brochure and said, this is a way you can get back into being active. And um, I had some lingering issues from my head injury and through working with guides who could be out on the road with me so I was safe, I could get back kind of into, into the game. And I took over in 2014 um, from the former chapter president, I took over the leadership of the chapter here. Awesome. So I kind of played two roles, both okay. as it's an awesome. athlete You're like that, and as that, a leader. that hair club for men, <laughs> not just a client, I work here too. Right? I'm not, <laughs> right. I don't just work here, I'm a client, something like that. Exactly. <laughs> I, um, that's great. So it is, it's neat for me to be able to pay it forward to others. Um, you know, someone did that for me, got me active again, and now that's just my honor to, to represent um, 
you know, I work for the organization now and have a great team of volunteers um, here in the state who help lead the chapter with me. Perfect. And that leads us right to Aviva, who um, you can tell us what you do with Achilles. So I'm a guide. Um, I've guided a lot of different um, athletes, whether they're in wheelchairs or they're disabled vision-wise. Um, started out actually not in Connecticut, started out um, doing it in New York um, with um, Cigna, actually, and went out there and then found out that Connecticut has one and then got involved over here. So. Um, and I've been doing it, I want to say now, for five years. So when I hear the word guide, of course, as a blind person, I envision only one, you know, to me, a guide is a person who assists a person who's blind, but it sounds to me like the, the term guide in relation to this organization is the, the um, partner from Achilles who partners with someone with a disability, regardless of whether it's visual, visual, visual disability or mobility disability or cognitive disability, you're the, the guide is the Achilles representative who assists them in whichever way they need to be assisted. Is that an accurate understanding? That is very accurate. That's correct. Cool. And Suzanne? Well, um, I am an athlete. I joined Achilles um, just about exactly a year ago. Um, prior to that, I had no idea that um, to be able to actually go out and run was an option. Um, I was active on the treadmill at home, you know, which is pretty boring, but it's um, <laughs> something. And there was a race, there is a race, um, the Bill Landers uh, Memorial Race, um, which is held every May in Glastonbury. And I really wanted to participate because it had meaning to me. And um, I asked uh, a friend who I knew had done some running who also doesn't have vision and I asked um, how it could be, how he had done it, and he gave me Aaron's number. And as they say, the rest is history. And um, I met my first guide, and we started training together, and then we ran the, the 5K in Glastonbury, and um, we ran a total of five races last year. And um, it, it's just an amazing feeling to go in from having no idea that it's even possible to the feeling of freedom of just going out and uh, moving and running and being out in in nature and um, it, it's just been absolutely wonderful. Well it's so interesting because I you know as a person who's been blind my whole life running is not something that is my lizard brain jumps up and says, do not do this because anything that you bump into hurts more when you run. <laughs> right. And the few times that I've ignored that, I'd say more often than not, it's ended up exactly as I suspected. It hurt a lot because I mm -hmm. encountered something. Um, and then even when I'm in a place, like I've, you know, I've been on a beach where there's like no lifeguard stands and there's no people and, and I'm with someone I can really trust and they say, just run. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even know I can make myself do that if I have to because it's, Everything inside goes, no, 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 do not run. Running is not safe. Um, so it, it's so interesting to hear you talk about that because I, I know what you're saying. Like it, it's, um, it almost seemed like a totally, like a non-option. Exactly. Not even something I considered and said, oh, I'd rather not do that. It was, it's more like a, that's just not something. It's like saying, you know, go read that book in print or something. It's, it's, it just cannot be done. <laughs> um, so this is really, really interesting because I, sort of had this idea that maybe everybody involved, like they, like Aaron, they'd been a runner, they already knew what they were doing, they already loved to, to run, they thought it was the best thing ever, and then they stopped being able to do it the way they did, yeah. so they were just looking to start again, but now you're telling me that that's <clears throat> not the case with a lot of people. They're just decided to start this for some crazy reason just to do it and are, and are enjoying it and being able to do it, and that's really exciting. It uh, is. Both of those things are exciting. Andrea, I, when I'm talking to athletes, you know, I think that's one of, you know, the things that amazes me the most, you know, when I ask to tell their story and how did you find Achilles and how did you hear about us and what made you take that step? And I hear a lot of that kind of fear. You know, they're, they're, they want to be active. Maybe their doctor told them they had to be um, or they've just, you know, want to challenge themselves differently or set a different goal or find something that's meaningful, like Suzanne said, and, but they just don't know how. So that's where we can come in and you know we train the guides like Aviva um, you know there's a there's a whole process 
um, that they go through so that they can literally be, you know, the eyes or the ears or the balance or the leg or whatever it is for that athlete, they're meeting them where they're at and they can be safe and, you know, they run together and I think, you know, I won't put words in your mouth, Suzanne, but there's trust that develops and there's friendship and, you know, the, yeah. yeah, and it's, it's just magical to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely true. Mary Drake was the, the first guide who came out to train with me. And I run with a tether. It's, it's actually just a hairband, but that's what we use. And she said, okay, well, this is how we do it. And so we went down to the street and she says, okay, well, let's go. And it took like total faith. And um, it was a little terrifying yeah. for me to just start running it's like i haven't you know moved like this i'm always holding something solid whether it's my my um, cane or a handrail or a person's uh, arm and um so it, it really took a leap of faith to just you know start uh, going holding this tether and and then it was like this feeling of freedom it's like oh my goodness i my arms can move and it just felt so um free and and amazing and um it's um it's a wonderful opportunity i really appreciate the people who give their athletic ability to help people who otherwise couldn't get out there and enjoy running and and participating in in the events that, that's that's so cool I, i'm sitting here thinking i'm not even sure like i you, you listen to people talk about running and they talk about form and i'm like i, I don't even think I, I mean i obviously i can i know like if i had to run if there was like a bear chasing me or something i'm sure i could run but like i can't even really like, like i'm sure i run like you know a, a toddler or something like because like, running is just not something i do you know maybe i guess i probably did as a little kid when you don't have any fear when you're a kid you just run around and you bounce and it's all good but um, certainly not as a, a grown-up have i run very very often so it's interesting to think about like even learning how to run um technique wise um also, I, I was sitting here thinking about this. So what if you, is it just running um, or are there other types of uh, bicycling or something? Are there other, is this specifically for runners or people who want to be on their, you know, in some sort of road activity as opposed to um, bicycling or swimming or something like that? Yeah, we mostly focus on road races okay. um, and fitness walks. And so... So when I work with all the race directors, you know, around the region, you know, I'm looking at their events and we try to find something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they are just going to walk, that's fantastic. And we try to find maybe there's a fitness walk component, you know, a shorter distance, like a one or two miler. Mm -hmm. um, and then always a 5K, which is 3.1 yeah. miles. Right. Sometimes a 10K, 6.2 miles. Half so people could walk those. They don't, you don't have to run yeah. if you don't. If it's Correct. not yeah. even because you don't can't, just because like not everyone wants to run. <laughs> right. It's yeah. not everyone's mm -hmm. thing. We just right. say mm -hmm. move. Right. As just long as be you're active moving. and move forward. Whether it's walking, we have we have an athlete who skips. Yep. Yes, we do. And wow. Or um, some of our um, our spinal cord injury, they um, hand cycle, or they're in a custom racing wheelchair, so they're rolling. Yep. Um, walking, running, skipping, rolling, <laughs> crutching. Some of our amputees use crutches. Whatever form of movement works. We have one athlete who pushes um, a custom wheelchair backwards. Aviva's run with him. Yes. He faces Just one backwards. leg. He goes backwards. Backwards wow. with one leg. So where are his eyes? We direct him on which right, way to go. Because right. he can't see. Because he's backwards. backwards. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But he's moving. Yeah. Very, yes, absolutely. Yes. So the way that it would work if I say, just just saying, like, if I had a friend who, no, if I, <laughs> some friend somewhere that, well, that's interested in learning more about this. <laughs> so the, the process would be that a person would contact you and say, okay, this is my deal. I'm a, I have a disability. This is my disability. I want to get involved. Um, there would be some sort of interview process to determine the level of 
experience, physicality, ex um, you know, interest of the person who's applying. And then I'm assuming there's some interest, interesting uh, matching that goes on in, in, in matching the, the guide with the person. It's like Tinder for, for Achilles. You know, you got, you got all these it's a athletes it's over here and all these guides <laughs> over here. And, you know, okay, we're going to swipe over there to get that person, that person. Yep. <laughs> um, but I would assume you can't, it's not just a here, it's not just a here's a person, here's a person. There's got to right. be some, some actual sort of um, thinking that goes into that so that you right. have people that can really click and that trust can happen. Correct. Yep, I'm very fortunate. Like I said, I have amazing volunteers who, who work with me behind the scenes. Um, we have our event coordinator, Grit, who works with the athletes and the guides directly. Yep. And she kind of like Tinder, you know, she has them fill out profiles when they join, you know, tell us about yourself, tell us about what you need from a guide, tell us a fun fact about yourself, you know. Um, and then that way, let's say we've matched Suzanne and Viva to run in a race together and they're meeting for the first time. They're going to get profiles and they're going to talk on the phone. They're going to do mm -hmm. some practice runs. Um, in local communities um, and if as with any right tinder if it doesn't work out it's not a good match then we find somebody okay. else because it has to be a trusting relationship on both sides right mm -hmm. um, you know we also match with pace you know if Suzanne was too fast for Viva vice versa that wouldn't be a good experience for either one of them right so there are a lot of variables that grit takes into account when she's matching and a lot of times we see friendships just blossom. Right. Yes. They do things outside of right. events with us. They go to dinner. Um, yep. That, I, yeah. I had an athlete who called me over the winter and said, I need my guide's addresses. I want to send <laughs> holiday cards. It was mm. very, you know, just yeah. uh -huh. yep. personal well, it, relationship. It, it is true. When you, when you build a relationship with another person that's, that's beyond just the let's have coffee together or, you know, right. chatting on the phone, mm -hmm. when you, when you, give your trust to that person it it's sort of by nature can't just be a oh yeah we'll see you at the next race it's kind of like you stick yeah. your cane in the corner oh, and be like, right. All right, I'll, I'll pull you out next time <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right, right. Um, so that so that that makes sense and, and obviously that matching process is really important because okay. you do want your your athletes to feel safe and you also want your guides to feel like they're comfortable with the person they're matched with and they're comfortable with what they're being asked to do. So that's, that's really interesting. Um, so even though you're based in Connecticut, you do races all over New England. We do. We just had a small team up at the Boston Marathon last week. Yeah. Very. We go to the New York City Marathon, other races in New York, Rhode Island, um, upstate New York, I'm trying to think, Pennsylvania, DC, that's as far there, at, no, I'm sorry, Florida is the further south. And because you have athletes all over the state, it's not like it's a club where everyone comes and runs on Monday night together. It's a, it's a, um, you might have teams that go to these races, but each, each guide and athlete are in their, in the own athletes community training and doing their own thing and possibly just running in their own races. It's not like the, you have to all do things as a big group. We do a, a little bit of everything. Okay. Yep. Um, so to get uh, ready, you know, Suzanne, I don't know if you want to talk about how you trained or your training. I'm going to brag. She's doing her first half marathon oh. this month. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, Mary um, organized um, a, a, a several training nights at a gym in uh, Glastonbury, and that was a very fun um, interaction as we trained um, to meet other athletes and to meet other guides. And so there was a social aspect of it mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. And, you know, we went through some, a few uh, exercises and, and things. And um, Mary and I happened to live near one another. So we um, do um, team up to run together um, often. Be because we're we're near one another mm -hmm. and it, it right. works out exactly. so um, but I have met the nicest people since joining Achilles they're just the greatest people I think are are drawn to this um, people who are so generous of heart to give up their own personal athletic goals perhaps to help others who couldn't participate if they 
um, you know, didn't have a guide. I, it just touches my heart that they're so so kind and generous to, to do that. And it's just a great group of people, the athletes and the guides. And Aaron does a fabulous job just keeping everybody going. It's just great. And I know that we were talking earlier about the jackets. So when, when an athlete and a guide are in a race together, um, w how is it that other runners or participants in that event can be um, aware that there's a, a team a, as opposed to two individuals? So as you can see, we're yep. in bright neon. <laughs> and some of our shirts says guide. The other one will say an athlete or visually impaired or blind runner. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of races, they're beginning to know because we get a lot of cheers that to go Achilles, people are quite aware. So you're um, not wearing the, a jacket, Aviva, that says blind running guide? No. Because that would be nope. scary. <laughs> no, that would, yeah, no. It just says guide. Okay. Yes. And yes. We don't need a blind running guide. We need a, <laughs> no. we need a sighted running guide. Yes, a sighted running guide. Yep. And we have them on the front and the back of the shirt because a lot okay. of times if you're coming in a crowded race right. from behind, we don't want Suzanne. People try to cut between you. Correct. Right. right. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's visible um, in bigger races like the Hartford Marathon, which we do as a big team. Yep. Last year there was, what, over 75 of us, I think. So yeah. when we're all together in our tent in Bushnell Park, I, I truly firmly believe we can be seen from space. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. on, right? Uh -huh. Yep. True. Absolutely. Yeah. But then, like, Suzanne's representing the Connecticut chapter at the Brooklyn Half Marathon. She's our only athlete going there. So we have big events. We have, you know, athletes taking, you know, leaps of faith out of the state and traveling to races and representing with their Achilles Connecticut shirt. So we're very proud, you know, of Suzanne and, and all our athletes. We have over, what, 65 right now, our current head count and growing. That's wonderful. And so um, there seem, in sort of just thinking about this, it seems like there's two avenues that need to come together in, in awareness. You need athletes, people with disabilities who want to be moving, who want to be active and you need them to know about you and you also need to have guides learn about you so that you right. can continue to have the guides that you need because you're going to keep growing with the athletes that are going to learn about you Correct. um so if all of the people watching tonight <laughs> want to become involved either as an athlete or as a guide can i be a guide no just kidding um, <laughs> <laughs> If it was another blind person, they wouldn't see the guide dog. <laughs> right. um, okay, so seriously, if, if people watching or people that I talk to or anyone talks to who, who wants to talk about how amazing this organization is, what are the ways that someone can learn more about becoming involved on, on whether it's uh, as a guide, as an athlete, as a donor? Mm -hmm. um, how, how can we learn more about this? So we do have a website, um, www.achillesct.org. And we have all of our information about the team, about athletes, the whole section on athletes, guides, um, applications are online, um, all the events that we do throughout the year. We start in April, we end in November, and have probably, I think this year, about 12 different races that we're doing, um, including our own, which is in July. Uh, we kind of shine the spotlight on athletes um, of people with all abilities. It's in Bloomfield, and uh, it's just a way, a great way to showcase so know, the fact that anyone can do anything they set their mind to. So tell me a little more, like when is that race, and what is it called, and and um, yeah. things like that. Um, it is the the official name of it is the Achilles Connecticut Hope and Possibility, presented by Cigna. They are our presenting sponsor. We're grateful for their support. Um, it's a 5K, 10K, 1.5 fitness walk, kids run, so where you can get a cape if you do the kids run. Some adults do that. <laughs> I, I want that. I want a cape. Okay. So again, something for everyone, all abilities. And uh, it's July 22nd in Bloomfield. That is really, really awesome. Yep. Hartford Marathon is our race director, and you can register on the, their website, hartfordmarathon.com. And I know just from our conversation before um, we, we started taping tonight that you work with 
I'm sure a lot of organizations and gyms, but particularly I, 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 the one that is familiar to me is Chapter 126. Right. Um, and we actually, I actually had Kelly on the show, it seems like 100 years ago, but it was probably only about a year and a half ago. <laughs> um, and so what a great partnership because having an accessible fitness center just works so in, in, in partnership with what yeah. you're doing. Right, and so obviously we live in New England, so we're not as active outdoors during the winter. Right. So, right, partnerships with Chapter 126 or the gym um, that Suzanne mentioned, Connecticut Sports and Fitness in Glastonbury. YMCA's all around Connecticut we partner with, and so our athletes can stay active indoors. Um, and then as the weather gets nicer, um, be in local parks, tracks, in their communities out running, getting ready for racing season. Yep. And if an individual who's interested in becoming a participant um, doesn't feel that running is either something they want to do or at the, at the time of joining doesn't feel like that's a goal that they feel they mm -hmm. can attain, fitness walking is definitely something that they can feel yeah. is, a, is, a, is a recognized and legitimate option. Absolutely. With, with Achilles. Yeah. Absolutely. We have a lot of runners, well, I should say runners, walkers. Mm -hmm. We do. We do just uh, 5K and they walk mm -hmm. and we just guide them. I mean, whether it's because of visually impaired or because of, you know, other disabilities that just mm -hmm. prevent them from being able to run. Is is there a an age requirement on either end for Achilles? Good question. Nope, there is none. All ages, all abilities. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. I learned so much this evening, and um, Susie, I have to tell you that Suzanne's been pestering me start running everyone who starts running wants everyone else to run <laughs> how come everyone doesn't eat like everyone it's like it's like eating spinach oh hey start eating spinach you have to eat spinach too it's, it's a it's a very interesting thing um but suzanne is the first non-sighted runner that i've known that's been doing this to me i always could be like well i don't have to do that because that person can see so i can just ignore uh -huh. them but i can't do that so much with suzanne um but it's it's so wonderful to know that right here in connecticut we have this amazing organization that will partner um, athletes with any with any ability and and hence any disability, and a guide to mm -hmm. to be the the person that can, they can trust and can be their eyes or their ears or help them with balance or whatever it is that they need help with, and the people can be going out and and participating not just in a physical plan for themselves but in a, in races and competing and like that's really it's just so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's it's all over the state. You don't have to be in some sort of you know metro center where you can get right. public transit and all that stuff, which yeah. is such a struggle for um, so many people with disabilities in, in yeah. well anywhere, but particularly in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, and Aaron, I would like you to just give us the website again. Sure. Can I just make one quick point? Of just course. to clarify. So there are people who are not competitive and yep. who just want to be active. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure. Thank you. That, yeah, so, that so I'm clear that we just, if you join doesn't mean we're going to put you in a marathon. Okay. <laughs> so you, you could just join because you want to move. Correct. Correct. Okay. And we have, we have people in their local neighborhoods. Um, we have Terry who lives in Middletown. He lives right near the Wesleyan track. I have a network of guides for him and he is his version of, a marathon or a race is just being out like three days a week in awesome. the community at the track. That's fantastic. Exactly. So that's cool. Yeah. That, that makes me even more yeah. excited for me personally. So right. Mm -hmm. So give me that website again, please. So it's AchillesCT.org. Wonderful. Well, yeah. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. This has been so interesting for me, and I'm hoping for all of the watchers out there. Again, this is, as I see it, a blind woman's view. And I hope that we all can be very nice to each other through the next month and everyone has a great evening. Mm -hmm.